everyone. Welcome back to Hope for Today. I hope today is going to be a good day for you. I hope today the Lord is going to speak to you. I hope that this message is an encouragement to you. And I hope that you find hope for today in what we're going to be chatting about. I have heard from all of you all season long. You have no idea how much I needed to hear that. You have no idea that message was meant for me. No, no, no. Let me correct you right now. Set the record straight. These devotions are for me because I'm living them. The Lord is teaching me. The Lord is molding and shaping me. And I have to tell you, the times, especially when I'm like, I'm empty, I've got nothing to share, and I'm like starting to panic, like, I got to be there for hope for today. I got my hope for today. People waiting to talk to me through the camera and, you know, and get their little taste of hope for today. And I've got nothing to share. It's always, you know, I kind of hang on for the ride because then the Lord's saying, um, hang on, I got something coming. We're going to be talking. I'm going to be sharing something. And it's going to be through the life that you are currently living. So we're going to be in Proverbs, Luke, and Galatians. This is a real simple topic, okay? We're going to talk about commitment, and we're going to talk about transitions in life. What are we talking about today? Okay, so I mentioned, I don't know if it was last podcast or one before that, that my wedding anniversary is coming up, and 36 years. Go Team Wilson, right? And uh, so we've been married 36 years. I've been a parent and I've been parenting with my husband for 34 years. And we have been schooling our kids for 28 years. Some of you know where I'm going with this. And in that 28 years, either I was getting a kid on the bus or I was bringing a kid to school or we were homeschooling probably 20 of those years. So we, we've been busy, you know, we did the Sunday school picnics, we were Sunday school teachers, we drove the kids to Discovery Kids at church, we were helping a youth group, we were doing all the things, you know, all the kid functions, the kids' birthday parties, all these activities for 34 years as a parent. We have invested in our kids. 28 years we've been schooling our kids. And we were married two years, almost two years, um, just shy of two years when our first son was born. My kids are now grown. As of this month, my youngest son is done with school as far as he's concerned forever. My kids are done schooling. My kids are adults. My kids don't need parenting anymore. They need a friend. They need a parent when you know they need prayer and maybe some advice or maybe a home-cooked meal but they don't need that parenting anymore. And I'm at that transition in life of, it's just me and this other guy that over here that I fell in love with 36 plus years ago. We're in a transition. I'm in a new season. But it's not just in that, like I'm in a transition of my kids are adults and we're empty nesters now. What do I do with this? What do I do with this time? What do I do with this man that I'm married to? You know, I, I never understood how people would say, yeah, we're, we grew apart. When the kids grew up, we separated, got divorced. Never understood it. No, not getting a divorce, let's set the record straight. But I can understand that growing apart. What about other things that you're in transition in for a season? Maybe the Lord has removed you from a certain ministry or a certain event that you used to be involved in or a, I don't know what, you know, the Lord has removed you for a season. I am in transition across the board. At work, there's transitions. In my church, there's transitions. In my home, there's transitions. In my immediate family, there's transmissions, um, transitions. I was joking with our older two kids were over the other day for dinner and I said, and they're going through transition. So when your kids go through, through transition, you know you're, you're right behind them. You're, you're, you know, you're right there. And I said, you know, the Wilson family is under construction. And I said, in two years, we're fa our family's going to look different. And that's the season that we're in. And you know what? It's scary, isn't it? We just talked about Peter walking on the water and that step of faith that you need to take. I don't like it. I don't know about you, but I don't like it. I don't like being an adult. You know, you can't wait to be an adult. And then, you, oh, you, the young people are, you know, early 20s. I'm doing all the adult things. 
Uh, yeah, and then you do, you've, you've done the adult things, and then you're like, I don't like this anymore. I want to be a little kid. I don't like having to make choices. I don't like having to make hard choices. I don't like having to move through seasons and, you know, transition with losing loved ones and all the rest. It's not fun. I don't like having to have faith. I'll be honest with you. I, you know, the Christian life is not easy. I don't like it. The Lord and I talk about this and I'm like, I am so tired and I'm weary of trying to be faithful and trying to do right and trying to walk with the Lord and all the rest. And I will tell you that, you know, the Lord wants us to run that race and he wants us to finish well. And, you know, if you look at an athlete that has won the gold medal in the Olympics and you ask them, was it worth it? I don't know that there'd be any gold medalist, maybe there is, I doubt it, that would say none of this was worth it. It was, and if you ask them, you know, oh, did you like just start training last week to get the gold medal? No, I've been training for years. They've had to eat right, they've had to sleep right, they've had to endure hard physical training. They've had to give up things in their life. Well, what do you mean? Well, they can't stay out late with their friends and they can't party with their friends like they'd like to or they can't be involved in other sports or in activities because they had to focus on where they were setting their goals toward. And that was to finish that race, to get that gold medal, to just, you know, that, that, was, that was it. Have you lost sight of the end goal in your own life? Are you in a transition and you're losing sight of what the end goal is? I want to read a couple of verses to you. In Proverbs 16, 3, commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. Boy, I need that because the days that I'm really weary and I'm like, Lord, I'm just tired. I'm tired of doing the right thing and I feel like nobody else is. You ever get like that? You feel like nobody else is doing the right thing but you? And why are they all getting better things than me? Better house, better car, better job, better vacations, better bank accounts, better jewelry, better, you know, better everything. That's not where you belong, Lynn Wilson. This is where you belong. But Lord, you don't, Lynn, I have a job for you and this is the job that I have for you. Commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. You know, one of the verses that we picked for our youngest son for his life verse is Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for a hope and a future, and not to harm you. The Lord knows the plans. Yeah, I can go out and I can do what Peter said. You know, I'm gonna go on that water. I'm all good. I got faith, I'm walking. And then I take my eyes off the Lord and I sink. I sink spiritually, emotionally, and physically. And it knocks me down. And I need to get back up and remember to commit my ways to the Lord. And he will establish my plans for I know the plans I have for you. The Lord knows the plans. He's not only got them planned out. He's in the solution. He's in the end. He's at where you're going to be getting your gold medal. When you get to glory, he's there. He's waiting for you when you come home to him, he's got your gold medal. He wants you to finish the race with success and to finish it well. Now, any Olympic athlete has had to work hard and sweat and it hurt. And you know, they've got injuries and they've gotten muscle aches and they've, you know, all the, you, you know, if you studied anyone or if you had, you know, your own family that have worked toward a marathon and they had to work and work and they had to give up things. That's, that's the race we're in. But I have to remember, you know, the song we sing, this is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Um, heaven is our ultimate home. And we can enjoy things here. I can enjoy, I can enjoy every night if I wanted chocolate chip mint ice cream, my favorite ice cream with rainbow sprinkles. Let's get this straight. I can enjoy the taste of a cup of coffee. I can enjoy the beauty outside. Right now, there's a slate wind. I'm looking out the window 
and it's green and it's the perfect temperature. I can enjoy the smell of flowers. I can enjoy family time. I can enjoy a great sermon at church on Sunday. I can enjoy that phone call I just got or the text message or the conversation that I've had with some of you. I can enjoy all that absolutely 100%. I can enjoy all that. But in that, there is that race that we are trying to get to the end of and we need to be faithful. In Galatians 6, 9, and let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. Oh, 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 Lord, really? You got a verse for that too? Let us not grow weary in doing good. But Lord, you don't understand. Um, go back to Galatians 6, 9, Lynn. Let us not grow weary. Lynn, go back to Proverbs 16, 3. Commit to the Lord whatever you do. Go back to Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Lord, you don't understand. You, you, you don't understand the pressure I'm under. Lord, you, no, you, you, you're not living my life. You have no idea what's happening. You don't understand, you know, my kids' attitudes or my husband's attitude, or you don't understand what I'm going through at work. Oh, Lord, you don't understand the church. Oh, it's just going crazy. The people, Lord, you, you don't, you don't understand my finances. Lord, I, I, Lord, you don't, Lord, you don't understand. Maybe we haven't said those words, but I'm sure we have felt those words. And then the Lord will say, how about Luke 137? You need a verse? Let me give you this one. For nothing will be impossible with God. You know, we did a uh, podcast, I want to say back in January, maybe, of 2023. And we talked about the Bible. We went back to like Bible 101 and just the basics of the Bible. And, you know, I talked about, I don't think there's, I say think, I know. There's nothing that I need to do in life that I can't find in the Bible. Now, it might not be black and white. And you know this, you know, the Lord did not give us everything black and white, but he gave us a guide in the Bible. He also gave me a brain and he gave me intelligence and he gave me a free will to make choices. Now, he says there's nothing impossible with God. I can debate that. I can deny that. I can make any choice I want. That's my own free will. But the fact still remains there's nothing impossible with God. You know, you think of salvation. Salvation is a free gift. I, have, I had a choice to make. Do I want to go to heaven or do I want to go to hell? That's black and white. There's only two places we're going. And you got to pick which one you're going to. It's your choice. The Lord has made a way. He had his son, his only son, die on the cross, who rose again for you and me to have a way, a bridge, if you want to say, on how we can get to heaven. And that's called salvation. I have a choice to make. I either make the choice that I want heaven or if I, eh, I can't be bothered. I'm going to hell. Whether I want to admit that I made the choice or not, that's where I'm going to go. God gave us a free will and he gave us intelligence. That's the bottom line. And that's in everything in life. Let me go back to where I am in transitions in life. I have a husband that I've been married to for 36 years. 30 Four years ago, we had children enter our life, and we have done nothing but commit our lives and invested in these kids. We love these kids. We'd, we'd, we'd do anything for our kids. We love our kids. But our kids are grown, and our kids are moving on in life. They'll always be there for us. If I need a help or yeah, I make a phone call, my kids are there. What do you need, Mom? I'm right there. What do you need? But it's time for my husband and I to sort of come back together. Why? Because we made a commitment to each other. That commitment is through thick and thin, you know, for better, for worse, for sicker, sickness and in health, for richer, for poorer, the whole nine yards. Those vows that you made, that was called a commitment. That was a vow to each other and to the Lord that we were going to stick together. Nothing is impossible with God. But you don't understand. We've grown apart. Nothing is impossible with God. But you don't understand. We, we don't think alike anymore. And we, you know, I've heard it all from friends. Commit to the Lord, whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Have you committed your marriage? Have you recommitted your marriage to the Lord? But you don't understand what I'm going through at work. You have no idea. 
I'm always doing the right thing and nobody else does. Mm. What does the Lord say? Let us not grow, grow weary of doing good. In due season, we will reap if we do not give up. But Lord, nothing's impossible. Commitments that we have made, the commitment that I made to my husband is a lifelong commitment until the Lord takes one of us home. We are committed to each other. That means respecting each other, loving each other, being there for each other, being a testimony. It goes beyond the marriage of me and my husband. We are a testimony. People know the Wilson family as believers. People watch the Wilson family. What are they doing? Oh, now they're empty nesters. I want to see what's happening. I have friends that have, you know, or have been going through this or will be going through this that will be watching. I have a commitment to the Lord. When I accepted the Lord as my personal Savior, I made a commitment to Him that I want to serve you also. That service is to, that ministry is also to my husband and to my children and to my local church. Do you see how all that's connected? Everything I do is connected. My testimony of an individual, my testimony as a wife, my testimony as a mother, my testimony in church, my testimony at work, my testimony when I'm standing on the line on the deli counter, watching all these people like cut in front and everything else, where's my testimony? My testimony is when I'm driving down the parkway and someone cuts in front of me. My testimony is when I don't, agree with political situations. My testimony is when I don't agree with decisions made by someone else. My testimony, my commitment. The Lord can remind me of Proverbs 16, 3, commit, your, uh, your, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Lord, what are your plans? I asked him, could you like fill me in a little bit? Could you send me a heavenly postcard? I need some direction. I need clarity of thought. Lord, what does the Bible say? Ask for wisdom. Lord, I need wisdom. I feel you're pushing me in this direction, but I'm so confused. God's not the author of confusion. Okay, Lord, you're not. I, I am confused. I, so I need wisdom. I need clarity. The Lord tells me, don't grow weary. Don't grow weary. I got plans. I got plans for you. You will get that gold medal. Run that, way, that race. Finish well. And then remember in Luke chapter 1, verse 37, for nothing is impossible with God. Amen to that. Can I get an amen? I know I can't hear you. Put it in the comments below. Just give me an amen. I hope you have enjoyed this season here on Hope for Today. And we'll pick up the season once again. Thank you for being there. Thank you for being a support and an, an encouragement personally to me. Many of you I see, I, I see faces all the time. Hi, Lynn, I watch your podcast and I don't know your name. But you know what the Lord knows. And I want to thank you personally for encouraging me. You leave me notes and comments. I get cards. I get emails. Amen, amen, and amen. So take whatever the Lord shared today and pass that along. And we will catch up with each other on the next podcast. Thanks so much, and you have a great day.